So today we're going to talk about the 10,000 hour or 10 year rule that was made famous by Malcolm Gladwell from his book, Outliers. Now, before we get started, I need to preface something. I am not a psychologist. I am not a statistic analyst or anything like that. Um, so the opinion you're getting from me is just of someone who has spent that 10,000 plus hours and 10 years plus at their craft. And for me, that's both playing and teaching ukulele. And so you know, take everything I say with a grain of salt because I am in no way an expert in this field, but I think, you know, as somebody who's spent that time, I might have some insight and opinions that, you know, might be different than some others. And so the first thing I want to talk about is how I think that this rule, well, let's talk about the rule, 10,000 hours or 10 years. What, what it is, is it's something that Malcolm Gladwell outlined in his book that talked about, uh, essentially, it takes 10,000 hours or three hours a day uh, for 10 years to become a master of something. And this is paraphrasing it pretty hard. Um, but I think that that number is kind of just that. It's just a number. And it's kind of a consistent number that comes up when talking to people about mastering something and becoming a, you know, a master of your craft. Uh, I think that it's a pretty safe bet if you spend 10,000 hours doing something, you're going to get pretty good at it. But one of the big important parts to it is how you're spending that 10,000 hours. And this is where I think some people kind of get this whole 10,000 hour rule wrong a little bit. Because it's not just about spending the time, it's how you spend the time that makes a huge difference to your outcome with your ability at the end of these hours. In fact, you know, one of the things Malcolm Gladwell says in his book is uh, practice isn't the thing you do once you're good, it's the thing you do that makes you good. And I really like that quote because I think that that articulates very well what I think is most important with this concept is it's not just spending the time, it's how you spend the time that really matters. And careful, deliberate, guided practice is absolutely critical to be able to mastering something. So what do I mean by that? Well, careful, deliberate, guided. Let's talk about those three words I'm using here. Careful, uh, what I mean by this is being very cognizant of what it is you're working on, making sure that what you're practicing is not kind of half done, so to speak, right? You're very, very careful about doing things correctly and making sure that you're doing things the way that they're sh they should be done, right? So you're never just sort of going and, oh, what was I doing there, right? You know, it's, it's, uh, it's carefully thought of. Deliberate is, you know, making sure that you're spending that time to really dive into whatever it is. Instead of just picking up the thing and practicing, it's being very deliberate of what aspect do I need to work on with my practice right now and working from there, right? And then, you know, the other thing guided that I mentioned is having a teacher or some guidance to make sure what it is you're working on is the correct way of doing it, right? It's one thing to just be very careful of your practice, deliberately working on something, but what's really important is making sure that you are working on something that should be worked on. And that's where that deliberate practice comes into play. And this is where learning from a teacher will expedite your process and make those 10,000 hours more beneficial. And this is where I think the 10,000 hours kind of falls apart just a little bit. Because if I spend 10,000 hours learning a skill under a master of that skill, where we spend 10,000 hours together practicing and them showing me that skill, versus I spend the 10,000 hours just sitting on by myself playing, it's gonna be a big difference in your ability over those separate instances of 10,000 hours, aren't there, right? And so that's really important to think about as you're practicing is that it's not just the amount of time, it's how you spend that time that's going to create, you know, your mastery of that subject. Now, again, I think the 10,000 hours is a little bit of a, it's like a catch, right? You know, it's like clickbait. I think the better way to look at it is the 10 years. So they talk about how it takes three hours of practice over every day for 10 years to master this thing to create that 10,000 hours. And I think that decade long endeavor is a really important one and critical one to be thinking of as you're thinking of this stuff because it's it almost doesn't matter how much you practice in any moment. It's how many of those moments you've practiced that really will create a comfort and mastery with playing. If I sat and I practiced eight hours a day on my ukulele and I hit the 10,000 hours, you know, in less than half the time, would I be better? 
than if I practiced three hours a day and did it for that full time, right? Eight hours a day over, what is it, four years or whatever, three and a half years, uh, you know, or three hours a day over 10. Who's going to be better at the end of that? Assuming all other things are even, you know, the practice uh, is the same quality, same sort of guidance, all that. Assuming everything's easy, who's going to be better between those two? Now, I don't know the answer because I've not seen both of these, but I have a pretty good idea based on my own experience that the person that spent the three hours a day over a decade is going to be more proficient than the person who spent eight hours a day over less than half the time. And the reason is just how our brains work. We kind of marinate over things. You ever notice that when you cram for a test, you start to lose some of what you're able to cram and then you go do something for a while and come back and it's like, oh my God, I remembered all that stuff I didn't think I would, right? It's the same stuff with learning skills like this. You need that time for your brain to kind of process what it's been working on and get better because of it. So I think that it's a better thing to look at this not as a 10,000 hour rule, but more as a 10 year rule. And think of it, if you work on it every day consistently for 10 years, you're gonna be pretty good at it as you go through, right? Now I wanna rewind just a bit to that, you know, concept of like guided practice and, you know, what it is you're working on to become that sort of master. Because if you practice your ukulele and you sit in the same chair and you practice in the same room, the same stuff over and over, and you're doing it in this controlled environment, even if you are, are learning correctly, you know, you you're watching good resources, learning from good books or whatever else, if that's the only thing you practice is sitting in that chair, in that same room, in that same environment, after 10,000 hours, you will be a master of playing in that chair, in that room, in that environment. And I bring this up because as soon as you leave that chair and that room and that environment, you might notice that you're not nearly as comfortable as you thought you were. And the reason for that is because the situations you're practicing towards aren't diverse enough. And I think this is something that's really, really important when you're considering this 10 years, 10,000 hours is it's not just what you're practicing it, but it's the environment that you're practicing it in as well. For me, I'm really lucky in that I've gotten to play the ukulele kind of all over. And because it's such a portable instrument, I've been able to take it different places to play and practice. And with teaching, while I do, you know, talk to the, my students through a webcam in the same, you know, studio space here, Every student is a different person. And each one of those lessons I give is a different situation that I'm sort of practicing towards. And I think that makes me a much more well-rounded player and teacher because of those situations that my practice have been in, rather than if I were just in the same seat, in the same environment every time as I played. And I think that that is just as important as the amount of time spent is how that time is spent, where that time is spent, right? Making sure that you're practicing towards different situations to become more flexible. Now, what's funny about that though, is wouldn't that imply that somebody that spent 10,000 hours on just one thing, one environment, would be better at that one environment than somebody who spent 10,000 hours in a variety of environments? And I think the answer to that's yes, right? If you're like a football player who maybe you're like a quarterback and you only throw one pass over and over and over, this one route to this one receiver, you're going to be pretty good at that one. But as soon as you play a game and that one's not there, you're not going to have any other options. Just like when you're practicing, if you sit in the same spot, same place, you're not going to be comfortable when you leave that spot or place. So I think it's very critical to think about that as you're going through as well. Just another sort of note, it's not just the amount of time spent, but it's where that time is spent and how many different places you can sort of work on it. Now to talk a little bit about myself, um, I've definitely taught over 10,000 hours. So I've been teaching now for well over 10 years um, and I've had as many as 30 lessons a week I was giving. Um, it slowed down when my son was born about six years ago, but I, I've been teaching for 12 or 13 years now um, with a full student load for most of that. Um, and so I've, I've done the math. I'm well over 10,000. I don't know the exact number of hours, but it's, it's over 10,000. In fact, I would argue that I've taught ukulele more than I've played ukulele, um, which I guess you play ukulele in teaching it, right? So it's all the 
it's all the same, right? And so it, it's funny because um, I feel like there are things I'm able to do now that I couldn't have even thought to be able to do 10 years ago or, you know, the 10,000 hours ago. And that's because of all the different experiences I've had through teaching and playing that just gave me a different perspective. And to me, the 10,000 hour rule boils down to experience. It's less about 10,000 hours of doing something and more about the 10,000 hours of experiencing that something. And you can't do 10,000 hours overnight, obviously, right? And I think that Gladwell, you know, uses the 10,000 hour number as this ridiculously high number and high threshold deliberately to show that success is not happening overnight. It is a process that takes time. And as you work towards that thing, as you deliberately, carefully and, you know, practice this thing, you will get better by doing it over time. It's not so much the 10,000 hours, it's over the 10 years that you've worked on it. And I've noticed this for my teaching a lot. I would be teaching a, a ton, doing the 30 lessons a week or whatever, and, uh, you know, feeling like I'm making progress with teaching, but... I felt like I made more progress with my teaching as those hours kind of stacked up. And that really made a difference for me. Uh, not so much the, you know, hour to hour level, but the year to year level. So I, I hope that makes sense. I'm kind of rambling about it now. But it's such a fascinating concept. And, you know, that that quote that uh, from from Gladwell's book of practice isn't the thing you do once you're good. It's the thing the do, that you do to make you good. Uh, that I really like that and think that's a great mindset because it also kind of talks more about how this is all a journey. And the 10,000 hours sounds like such a finite, oh, I hit my 10,000 hours, I'm done. But Gladwell talks about in his book about how chess masters will be upwards of 20 to 50,000 hours to become a master, right? And so someone at 10,000 is just kind of starting. And that's true for anything. You know, the best ukulele players in the world are only going to get better, right? Uh, as long as they keep practicing. So um, I think that it's really important to have the mindset of 10,000 hours is this this out there number to talk about mastery of something, but it's really a little bit arbitrary and it's more about the over time that you're working on these things. And yeah, again, it's about that practice. It's not the thing that you do once you're good. It's the thing that you do that makes you good. So kind of interesting stuff. I have, there's tons of questions that were presented in the forums here on Rock Class 101 and in the YouTube chat and things. So I want to take lots of time to answer those and kind of talk about those a bit because this is all just so fascinating. Um, and so I may go to the forum post right now. The first comment in there is uh, from Gigi, who has three hours to dedicate every day just to take 10 years to master it? Well, somebody who's not looking to master something, but rather pursuing something because they enjoy it. And I know that because that's me. I did not aim to master the ukulele or master ukulele teaching at any point. For me, it's just something I enjoyed. I loved spending my time with it and over you know a decade plus of teaching and 20 plus years of playing, I've, I've had that. Now, I do not think of myself as a master. However, there is experience that I've gained from those 10 years that nothing other than 10 years of doing it would give me. But I didn't do it thinking, oh, three hours a day, 10 years, I'll have this. That was never my mindset. Uh, the uh, Smoke A Lot posts about uh, a 20-hour rule, uh, I believe, by Josh Kaufman. And that's a very interesting thing. Definitely something to check out in the message forums on Rock Class 101. Um, and uh, then the uh, Bumble Bard says quite a few different things. Um, but uh, saying this is a great topic, kind of like uh, what Smoke A Lot said, there is no exact number of hours that automatically make you a master. But it also is a great accomplishment to have spent that much time creating. That said, it seems like time isn't the only factor. The resources you have, the quality of your practice, drive and inspiration seem just as important. Absolutely. You know, to kind of answer that first question of who has three hours a day over 10 years just to master something. Well, if you're not thinking of the end result, but you're rather just thinking about the journey, you're going to have a much better time with this. Don't think of the 10,000 hours as something that you're trying to achieve as an end result, but rather just think of, you know, how how you can work towards that. Uh, you know, I, I don't think any masters are thinking of the hitting the 10,000 hour mark and stopping. So finding that inspiration and that drive throughout the process is very, very important. 
Uh, Bumble Bard also says, time is just a vehicle, man. Where will the driver go? What roads will they take? The scenic route or the freeway? Will they stop at Arby's for curly fries? Destiny, man. Absolutely, right? And I think that that also speaks volume to it is about the journey. And, you know, the 10,000 hour mark, you can think of as sort of like stopping for the curly fries in some ways because you're going to get back in the car and keep driving and masters of their craft don't stop at 10,000 hours say I'm a master and quit practicing right a 10,000 hour mark is more of a metric to show when people feel like they start to become more proficient with what they're working on not necessarily the finish point of when they've mastered it uh leb 397 uh says everyone is on a different path uh, the bumble bard states practice is time spent obligations get in the way work family to-do lists and then you have age parts take longer to learn i'm out of place in my life retired and love learning some new songs i play for me rarely in front of anyone except for my recordings on rock class 101 so is three things uh so question is three things self-accomplishment it's my time alone in a room one two three hours community with others similar goals and language being apart but who's counting absolutely right so the concept that you have to spend 10,000 hours on this to make it worth your while is absolutely ridiculous, right? This is, I so my hobby, you can see on the, the wall here, if you're watching this live, there's uh, some skateboards over here. Um, I love skateboarding. Am I ever going to hit 10,000 hours skateboarding? Not even freaking close, like not even remotely close. Does that mean I'm going to stop doing it? Not at all. I love doing it. It's a ton of fun. It's something I really enjoy. And I'm going to continue pursuing it because of that. I'm not going to be thinking of 10,000 hours as I go through. Um, and that's okay. You don't need to master every skill that you start working on. Uh, Gigi also says, uh, anyone who has taken the challenge to master anything knows it takes commitment and follow through. Show up every day, have fun, and one day you could actually shock yourself. I got to agree that our emotions could sabotage sabotage us or aid us in the process to me it's not so much about mastery but being consistent following through and enjoying the journey if you don't have the i give up attitude you could accomplish so many great things for yourself that was magical i couldn't have said it better myself it's all about that journey and all about finding what makes you fulfilled throughout that journey right the ten thousand hour rule and the stuff that malcolm gladwell is talking about has a lot less to do with hobbies which is what we're doing here right we're, we're doing this for hobbies for fun and a lot more to do with becoming a master of the craft right and that's not the goal the goal is to enjoy the journey not to finish it by becoming a master if you happen to become a master along the way it's fun uh and then uh Let's see, there's a few other posts in here. Um, one thing that Smoke A Lot says, uh, uh, it kind of picks up another live lesson episode where Matt talks about this learning curve, the Dunning-Kruger effect. Look it up, uh, it's linked down below if you're watching this recording. Uh, and how you are su at first super thrilled until you realize how little you actually know. Love the story about the burglar who used lemon juice to make himself invisible. I'll have to check that out. Uh, I just started learning Taimani's tremolo technique. Will probably take me more than 20 hours to master it, alluding to that TED talk in the uh, forums earlier. Yeah, and, and so you're exactly right. The Dunning-Kruger effect basically talks about how when you're have very little experience with something you think you know a lot about it and as you gain experience you actually realize how much you don't know and it takes a long time before you start going up the other end realizing that you're actually proficient with that thing i think that this ties very closely to that and the ten thousand hour rule people you know it's like wow that's so much time i better just not even try when really it's it, you know just start working on it consistently and uh what's so great is there's a comment here kind of at the end of the post so i'll keep working them through um, which is um, talking about a Stu Fuchs quote. I'm trying to find the exact quote, but uh, you know, Stu Fuchs, a great uh, teacher, said, uh, "Drop in the bucket." Uh, you know, a steady drops in the bucket fills it up. Something along those lines, and that's exactly what this is about. You know, an hour here or there, and eventually you you find that you've done quite a bit. Um, and so, a couple other questions here uh, with this, because there's so many great uh, questions and comments. Um, some people use, this is GG again, some people use the measurement as a means of an investment for business, like the training in K-pop, and then for the numbers correspond to money signs. I just want to have fun every day and use it to refine myself. This has been a great discussion. So yeah, you know, as, as hobbyists, as people that are doing this for fun, uh, because you enjoy it, I would not prioritize getting to 10,000 hours. Prioritize the hours you're spending having the most fun you possibly can. And you'll notice the hours will melt doing that. You will spend so much more time doing it when you're loving it. So um, it's so great. 
Yeah. Um, and then Andy Rose says, I'm 72 years old. If I practice 1.5 hours a day, which is a bit aspirational, but within the realm of possibility, I'll be about 90 when I hit 10,000 hours. On a more serious note, I think it's really all about the quality of practice, focusing on specific skills that I want to improve, developing musicianship and having fun. I think that last one's great. Oh, here's the Stu Fuchs quote. As Stu Fuchs, another great teacher says, drop by drop, the bucket is filled. Fantastic comment, Andy. I totally agree. I wouldn't, you know, you'll hit that 10,000 hours, no problem with, with that uh, 1.5 hours a day. But I think it's more critical that you're enjoying that 1.5 hours a day, less thinking about where you're going towards and more thinking about the moments you're in. And uh, just like you are, you're exactly right. Um, there are a couple other comments here uh, in the chat. Um, uh, Ron says, I had a teacher tell me once, if you're making mistakes, stop practicing and try it again later. So don't muscle memory bad playing. Exactly. That's what I alluded to earlier in the lesson too. I'm sure that's when you made the comment of how, you know, it's over time we develop skills, not just in the moment and spending 20 minutes on something and then taking 40 minutes off and coming back to it for another 20 minutes might end up being more beneficial than doing it for an hour straight, you know, and that's just kind of how our brains work. It's pretty fascinating. Um, Andy Rose also says, unless you are someone who doesn't ever plan to perform, it sounds like practicing performance in different settings, hopefully with friendly audience is important. Um, yeah. And even if you're not planning on performing, I still think it's a worthwhile endeavor to practice in different situations because you just get comfortable with adversity. And that's, I think, a really understated part of all this is, you know, the people who have 10,000 hours of work with this hopefully have a diverse 10,000 hours. So when they're thrust into a new situation, they have experienced it at least some in some ways in that time. You know, for me with private teaching with with uh, students, when I first started teaching, every student was brand new, completely different in every way. Right. And then like four or five years into teaching, I started seeing like archetypes of students. This person learns this way. This person learns this way. And maybe had five or six archetypes. Right. But then every once in a while, you get a student that's not quite in one of those archetypes because they're, they're just different. Everyone's different, right? And as a teacher who was only working for four or five years, I might be pushing them into one of those directions to try to make it more comfortable for myself or to rely on my experience that I had before. But that wasn't fair necessarily to the student. Now, after I've done it, I've been doing it for well over a decade and well over the 10,000 hours just teaching the ukulele. Every time I get a student, it's not new anymore. It's I've, I've experienced it somehow. It, you know, that student may be brand new. I've never seen them before in my life, but I've seen enough people with, uh, you know, they're a combination of 20 different people that I've worked with before and their style of learning I can relate to, not just because of the 10,000 hours, but because over the decade of doing all of these you know, different lessons, I'm able to actually relate to them. And there's no substitute for that experience. So yeah, it's pretty fascinating stuff. Uh, Andy says, great discussion. Sorry, I have to leave early, but I catch the ending on replay. Absolutely. Thank you for all the great comments there. Um, I'm going to look here and see if there's any other comments um, to answer. The discussion on Rock Class 101 was great. Um, and so you guys definitely should uh, check that out. Every month when we do these live lessons, um, we do a, a uh, forum post as well. And there's more comments in this one than I've ever seen, which I think is just so great. Um, I know that this live lesson has been a little bit rambly, but kind of comes with the territory. The 10,000 hour rule is such an interesting concept. And so just to summarize a little bit of what we've you know kind of discussed here is, the 10,000 hour rule you can also think of as the 10 year rule. And it's really about having spent three hours a day over 10 years to hit 10,000 hours to become a master of something. And the important thing with that is that the practice that you're doing during that time is not random. It's, you know, careful, deliberate and guided to create, you know, a really cohesive learning strategy. It's not just throwing stuff at the wall and hoping it sticks. And if you do these things, you will become a master in 10,000 hours or practicing three hours a day, 10 over 10 years, which I think is a little bit, a little bit clickbaity, right? Because everyone learns differently. Everyone's circumstances are different, but really what the 10,000 hour, 10 year mark is more of a, it's really more of just a, a showcasing of a consistency of the learning process for people. If you do that, you will be great at the end of it. For some people, they can do that a little earlier. For some people, it takes a little bit longer. I can tell you from my perspective, 10 years is really when I started become 
becoming very, very comfortable with my teaching ability on the ukulele. And it's kind of cool, you know, how that how that works out. And so um, I think for you and what you can take away from the 10,000 hour rule is that nobody's going to work on something for 10,000 hours if they don't want to. Right. It's going to be miserable to work on something for 10,000 hours if you don't want to be doing that thing. So for for what you can take away, don't worry about hitting that 10,000 hour mark. Worry more about doing things that you find so much fulfillment and enjoyment with that you feel like you could do them for 10,000 hours. And if you're doing that, you might just hit that 10,000 hour mark, but prioritize your own enjoyment, your own fulfillment with what you're practicing and know that you don't need to hit 10,000 10, hours with anything for it to be a worthwhile endeavor for you. I certainly have many hobbies and things in my life that I'll never scratch the surface of 10,000 hours, but I'm gonna continue doing them because I find them enjoying and I find fulfillment from them. So try to do that as well as you work through it. But as always, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. We had a few little uh, technical problems to start, but everything hopefully looks and sounds good for you guys as, as we went through here. Uh, maybe this 10,000 hour, 10 year mark thing is something that we'll revisit later. Um, it's been fun. I'd love to read your comments down below. And uh, if you're catching this as a recording, you can see a live stream here on Rock Class 101 every second Tuesday of the month. Um, so I hope to see you guys soon on one of those. If you're unable to make it, feel free to leave a comment in the forums on Rock Class 101. And uh, thank you guys so much for coming. I'll talk to you soon and take it easy.